do uh, Muslims condemn radical Islam? Is it their duty as Muslims and citizens of a Western society to condemn it? Um, or is tolerance of radical Islam uh, okay in their world? Uh, you know, tolerance of it within their communities, I should say. Tolerance in their mosques, tolerance in their families. In my opinion, it, it's not. The tolerance uh, leads to uh, encouraging it. Now, before I get started, I, I understand there are people who have grown up uh, as Muslims, and I've known many. Um, and this, this could easily apply to uh, Christians as well. Um, and just because someone is born into a Muslim or Christian or Jewish family doesn't mean uh, they have that religion ingrained in them. You know, just because, a, just because you were baptized as a child doesn't mean you are an ultra-Christian or a very conservative Christian. Um, so that's just an example with Christianity. Um, but with Islam, a lot of the principles of it are taught um, at a very young age. And um, you see statistics like, um, you know, one in five or one in four um, think in certain cases, um, in certain cases that uh, suicide bombers may be justified. And, uh, and it is a problem. Uh, it's a really scary thing to think anybody could justify. So that's kind of concerning. And I'll put up the source for that. There's also one thing I want to show. And um, it's this video of uh, basically Ben Affleck, Sam Harris, and Bill Maher debating radical Islam. And, and I want to just show it. You know, I'll put it up on the screen here. You and I have been trying to make the case, I think, I have anyway, that liberals need to stand up for liberal principles. They'll still get agitated over the abortion clinic bombing that happened in 1984. But when, <laughs> when you want to talk about the treatment of women and homosexuals and free thinkers and, and public intellectuals in the Muslim world, uh, I would argue that li liberals have failed us. And uh, the crucial point of confusion... Uh, yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. God you're here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, the crucial point of confusion... But you can see that Ben Ben Affleck is so caught up in, you know, this this dogmatic cognitive dissonance is what I'm going to call it, <laughs> that he almost completely shuts his mind down. I mean, look at look at look at his body language. I mean, it's practically it looks like someone stepped on his toes or cut all his toes off. I mean, he's so so shut down to the in the conversation. I mean, he's already made up his mind. Um, He's already following the narrative, and that's that. And it doesn't look like he's gonna be convinced. So, even it gets so hold on. Are races. you the person who understands the officially codified doctrine of Islam? You're uh, the interpreter well, of that, well, so you well, can say, "Well, I, this I'm, is." I'm, I think any, I'm actually well educated on this topic. I'm, I'm asking you. So I mean, you're you, saying if I criticize the, you're saying that Islamophobia is not a real thing. The but why yeah, are you we so have hostile to, about this? It's, it's, it's gross. It's racist. It's, it's not. It's but it's so not. It's so. It's like saying it's those so stateless, not, shifty Jew. You're not listening Absolutely to not. what well, we are saying. You guys are saying they have pretty good arguments, and um, Ben Affleck is just completely, uh, just not having it. But you know, as you can see from that video, like I said, you know, Ben Affleck's body language is just telling it all, and when he opens his mouth, it tells even more. But but moving on a little bit, um, I want to talk about the the enabling of radical uh, followers of Islam. Let's say you have a a, a mosque that has a, a 100 to 1 moderate to radical Muslim ratio. If all 100 of those um, those uh, moderates turn their head, do nothing. You know, as they say, all it takes for evil to prevail is uh, when good people do nothing. Um, it's cliche, but it's true. But if they all turn their head, uh, all ignore it or whatever, um, you know, you could argue that they're facilitating it. And uh, after the Paris attacks, um, you saw the police there uh, raiding all these mosques, and they found radical ideas in pamphlets and papers and books and whatnot in every single one of the mosques. Um, and so what does that say? Um, there's got to be some self-policing within the Muslim community. Otherwise, uh, you know, they're going to continue to be uh, targeted and worse yet, there's going to be more attacks. There's going to be more radicalized people. 
I can't stress that enough. There's got to be policing in the Muslim community. You know, um, if somebody uh, that looked like me did a terrorist attack, I would be screaming from the top of somewhere <laughs> saying, this guy is a jerk. This guy is a criminal. Um, and I would and I would denounce it and I would demand it, others denounce it. I wouldn't just say, oh, well, he wasn't a real Muslim. I mean, that's, that's, I always hear that. Oh, he's not a real Muslim. A real Muslim wouldn't do this. Well, show me a real Muslim. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's just such a, it's like a, a no true Scotsman fallacy. Um, there's got they get, they got to do better. And, um, you know, I've been debating in my head whether, you know, that's their responsibility or someone else's but it is their responsibility they need to denounce these people and they need to police their community and just in this this clip section uh from uh, gavin mckines with uh, rebel media um he talks about deporting the families of terrorists their entire families which i don't know if i agree completely with that i'm not sure how constitutional that is it would depend on their citizenship status what kind of visas they have um the totality of the circumstances whether they're enabling whatever but what he says is he brings up you know if that were the case there'd be a lot more interest in a family's activity so i'll show that clip here we got him we got ahmed rami rahami ahmed rahami hey ahmed hey your dad Ooh, what are you guys doing here deport them immediately and more importantly deport their entire families but can we at least get rid of these families? That's what Israel does. It works. So moderate Muslims are a big part of the problem because they are enabling terrorism by tolerating it. Now, if you say you're gone, if your nephew does any weird shit, you're gone, your husband's gone, your kids are gone, you know what you're gonna start seeing? A lot more interest in a family's behavior. So uh, my nephew, he went back and forth to Afghanistan again. I don't like that. So you can see, as you can see, you know, Gavin uh, lives in New York City, or, well, he lives in the New York City metro area. In this video, he's very frustrated, and I can understand, because um, of the recent attacks in New York City and New Jersey. And, you know, the left continues to not be effective with this. They are rolling out the red carpet to their own destruction. Tolerance is good. Tolerance is great. But how can you tolerate a ideology that doesn't have tolerance in it. The ideas are toxic to true liberal ideas uh, and toxic to Western society in general. And uh, as many people have said, the silence is deafening following a, a terrorist attack when it comes to Muslim society. You don't hear, I mean, you hear denouncement, but you don't hear it on the scale that uh, you would expect. Um, and this has gone back even as far as 9-11. Well, obviously, even further back than that. But, you know, people have told me uh, when the towers fell, um, a lot of people in the Muslim community didn't bat an eye. Nothing. Uh, which, when I heard that the first time, I was kind of shocked. But now it doesn't shock me because I've seen it. Uh, now it doesn't shock me because... I understand some of this ideology a little bit better now. Um, and Islam is just not compatible with um, Western society. Uh, and I know that may sound extreme. I know it may be extreme. But the ideas in the Quran and the Hadith, if I'll read it, uh, um, are just toxic to Western society. I mean... And I know people are going to say, but, but, but Christianity, Christianity is like that too. Yes, there are some really bad things in the Old Testament, for example. But um, in most schools of Christianity, that they're, they're teaching that the, the, the Old Testament um, is bad and it's outdated. And the New Testament seems to th be the thing that's most important. Um, and even if there is bad stuff in the New Testament... Here's the thing that's different. How many Christians do you see blowing up buildings? How many have flown an airplane into a building? How many have blown up stuff? How many have set pressure cookers off? Not as many Christians as, not as many radical Christians 
as radical Muslims. Uh, and that's just the way it is. Um, and there just seems to be, and there probably is, a lot more um, bad ideas <laughs> in the Quran. Uh, so when when radical Muslims go and do this, um, should we really be shocked and surprised? I mean, we should be to a certain extent, but um, this is what they're being taught. Um, stoning gays, women not equal. Uh, there is so much um, oppression of women uh, in Islam. And I've always found it offensive. Um, and I've had Muslim friends, and I, I haven't really brought it up because I, I didn't want to offend them, you know, because um, that was what they knew. Um, but I always found it just not fair. Um, and I just think it's funny that the, the left has adopted, uh, you know, Islam as part of its uh, narrative, part of its culture. And it's just, it doesn't make any sense to me because, the, you know, you got all these feminists and they're fighting, you know, feminine, modern third wave feminism is just crazy. And I'll probably end up doing a video on that. Um, not like I need to do another video on it because there are so much videos on how toxic feminism is. But they're fight, they're trying to get equal rights, but at the same time they have these uh, this radical ideology, these radical Muslims. You know, a, a woman is only half a man when it comes to testimony and whatnot. Uh, in, in Sharia law, and Sharia law is a whole, diff whole subject that I could get into. And, you know, how, how can they accept that? How can they not demand um, that that not be acceptable? Um, so that's where I have a problem with, uh, one of the problems I have with third wave feminism. Uh, it's just, it's really not helping. And then when we have... Um, attacks like in Orlando, um, people make excuses. <laughs> They're apologists. They say, "Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't his religion. It was. Uh, you know, oh, he wasn't born in um, in uh, the Middle East. He was born in New York City. It doesn't matter. There's enclaves of this religion in uh, every major city." Uh, so I'm not I'm not buying it and they, they say it's oh it's toxic masculinity or oh it's oh it's the gun it's, we don't have enough gun control and, and it's just it's so insulting um, one because I'm a male two because I'm a gun owner that they want to blame everything but the ideology but the cause um, and uh, it doesn't matter if the person was born in the Middle East or not. And some people went, even went as far as saying, oh, there must have been some American culture um, other than, you know, they, they implied other than gun culture, other than quote, unquote, toxic masculinity um, in where he was living that must have affected him. But I just, I don't buy that. Um, and in the case of the Orlando shooter, there there's probably other stuff going on too. Uh, there's rumors that he was gay. Maybe he was repressed. I don't know. All I know is he was a follower of um, an ideology that is not uh, accepting of homosexuals or accepting of women's equality. And that's a problem. You know, I'm not saying all Muslims are bad. I'm saying that what they're following is bad. And... Um, their adherence to it, uh, how strict they adhere to it, is inevitably going to dictate how good or bad of a person they are. But, you know, I think it's important uh, that we stop uh, avoiding the elephant in the room. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, so this was part one. And my next one, I'm going to talk about um, ra radical ideology too, which is going to be my next video. And that's going to be about BLM and the potential negative effects um, that that movement is going to have on politics. And there's a little preview right here if you want to pause it. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is Numerica Sheriff. Thank you for watching.